Talking Tile, the Ontario Farm Drainage Series, is brought to you by the Land Improvement Contractors of Ontario. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Talking Tile. In our previous episodes, we've talked about how drainage works, contractor licensing, and what farmers need to know about municipal drains. On this episode, I'm joined by drainage contractor Jesse Tate to talk about maintenance and what farmers can do to keep their systems working as efficiently as possible. So Jesse, let's start with a new drainage system. It's just been installed, it has sufficient outlet, it's legal. You know, can farmers forget about it for a while? No, a new drainage system isn't actually a one and done type of a thing. Um, if you have surface inlets, you're gonna have to keep them clean. Your outlets are gonna have to be marked, kept clean on a biannually basis. Um, also, when you're starting to get the field worked back down after a new system's put in, you don't wanna be running along the tile runs. You wanna be hitting those on an angle. There's a lot of loose soil still around the tile and we don't wanna disrupt that. Now, what about compaction? You know, we're running over fields with a lot of equipment. You know, how can that impact a drainage system? Well, when you have compaction on a drainage system, you're not gonna have the same type of infiltration that's running into the soil and getting to the tile. We're trying to get rid of this excess water. So we wanna really work our fields in the driest conditions possible, mitigate any of that type of uh, um, compaction that does happen. Deep ripping when it's really dry can actually help as well. Um, but we do, once again, just try to do it as dry as possible in the most favorable conditions. Yeah. Now what about soil health practices, Jesse? You know, can we actually help the system by using things like cover crops you know, to help soil infiltration? Absolutely. Root and air space in the soil is critical to a system almost. Um, so if you can do a cover crop, maybe grow a forage crop now and then, those, uh, those roots really do help the water get to the tile quicker. Yeah. Is it better than, I mean, some guys say, hey, well, well we can always split the tile. Is it, that's probably a better strategy. Well, you can split the tile. We're going to be doing some extreme <laughs> ripping when we're doing that as well. So um, just growing different varieties of crops can probably help the system just as much as, as, as splitting runs. Hey, we always uh, hear stories about plant roots that can find their way into tiles and make a mess. You know, how can we manage crops to avoid those situations? Well, okay, so that works into the same type of a thing again. If you do leave, say, alfalfa for a lot of years in a system, it's or in a field, I should say, it can get to the system. And it's not going to be actually when they're growing. It's going to be when you try to take them out. It's the dead roots that are going to fall off, run down, ball up, and create an issue. Um, so you just want to do your rotations as, as much as possible and uh, try to mitigate any of that type of stuff when you're... Uh, planting. Yeah, now there's some rules to live by. Well, what about planting winter canola? I uh, never plant winter canola on a freshly tiled system. Uh, that's pretty much a 100% chance of a full failure. So Jesse, if we do have roots in tile, how do we deal with it? You're going to want to probably contact your contractor at that point. There is some back flushing um, practices that can happen. We do that with iron ochre as well. Um, but usually if you find a ball, it can be dug up, removed, and then get the system back working again. Um, touching back on iron ochre. That is another concern that we do have sometimes and the best practices for that right now is just trying to back flush it as often as possible. Yeah. Hey, what about trees? Uh, you know, sometimes we're planting them, there's wind breaks, neighboring properties, you know, are treed. What impact uh, can they have on a drainage system and, and what do we need to consider? Yeah, trees can be an issue, mostly water loving trees. Um, there's poplars and willows and stuff like that and they will find their way to tile. Um, it has a lot to do with the design consideration, I would say. When I put a system in, I try to keep my mains as far away from trees as possible, when possible. If I have to, I will put laterals in behind the main, um, almost as a sacrificial tile. Um, that way, if roots do grow into something, it's not into the main critical part of the system. Hey, let's talk about how farmers can work with their contractors, guys like yourself, to make it easier to do maintenance. You know, keeping tile maps, you know, marking outlets, those things can certainly help. Yeah, marking your outlet is probably one of the main things I can, uh, I would advise farmers to do. But uh, keeping accurate records of stuff. If you've split runs, if you've had an old system and that you've, you've done new work too. Um, keeping digital copies, if you only have one old map from 1970 when your dad, you know, tiled the farm, get a digital copy of that somehow. Um, when people give me these things, they do get lost. They do get a copy spilt on them. So we try to keep those so everybody can uh, find them for years to come. 
So, Jesse, farmers have a lot of tools at their disposal these days, you know, a lot of satellite imagery, field mapping technology. How can farmers use these to help, you know, them map and, and manage their drainage systems? Yeah, so if you can overlay some of this stuff, we all do, most of the contractors I know do uh, digital mapping at this point. So it can be overlaid with a lot of things, climate field view. When people are doing variable rate spraying, all this kind of stuff, they can find areas where they're having poor yields or maybe ponding. And this could be something where you would want to put in a surface inlet or maybe a French drain. It's just working with your contractor to find the best way to get the most yield out of your property. Now, Jesse, annually Ontario gets a lot of rainfall and we're seeing more rain events. You know, should farmers be looking at their drainage systems with their contractors to come up with sort of ideas to deal with those challenges? Absolutely. Um, we're working with a higher drainage coefficient now. That gets water away quicker. Um, we're just trying to manage the water and get it to the right place at the right time. We want to avoid ponding when you do have certain tillage practices and we get heavy rains or a lot of rains at one point in time. Water is also very heavy and it can create a pond. So let's try to work with surface inlets, um, French drains, whatever we can do to get the water where it needs to be and when we want it there. Final question for you and that is, you know, where can farmers get more information about drainage and working with their contractor? There's a pile of fact sheets on uh, the Leica website, which is drainage.org. This stuff is all there and there's many tools and uh, resources that you can uh, find there. Um, but talk to your contractor. They're probably one of your best links to uh, get your fields working the best way for best possible yields. Great insights, Jesse. Hey, appreciate you taking some time for Talk and Tile. Thanks very much.